have to go back to Louis de Flores and the establishment of a special devices desk in the engineering division in the Navy in 1941. The Flores and this Bob Breeze were flying over and the Flores connection with IAS and he said, I'll go see IAS as to whether we can rent it. And he was able to rent the Guggenheim Mansion for the Navy and they moved up there from Washington in 1946. Getting in this blue box with the cover shut was like if you're subject to claustrophobia, you would have it. <laughs> now these, these uh, link trainers were really primitive as far as their being able to simulate actual flight. Uh, so they were kind of jerky and uh, <laughs> my reaction was it doesn't fly like the plane, you know, it, it just didn't smoothly react and uh, you had to get used to it. The Army, for some reason, got identified with this place and say, what are they doing up there? Colonel Alexander was a member of the first group of three Army officers that joined the center in 1950. The Air Force was moving out of Orlando at that time. There was Orlando Air Force Base and they were going to California. So there was an open facility down here in Florida and they thought that they could make the best of both worlds saying you guys need a room, we got plenty of room down in sunny Florida. So you moved down here, so we did. The old dumpy buildings struck me on the old Navy base. They were hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Um, the windows, you know, sometimes didn't go up. You got somebody's old desk that had, you know, junk spilled in it. And, uh, but I mean, everybody, everybody had kind of the same thing. It didn't matter what grade you were. Four thirty-four was only a two-lane highway. Now it's like six lanes. I remember we came out here when it was nothing but woods, and one little two-lane road that came off Alla Fair Trail. This building was designed for the Navy as a wave. That's what it looks like—a sine wave. The windows on the first floor on the contract side are slanted because they resemble the slanted windows on a carrier. New technology, training, integration, 21st century warfare. The team is all this and more. The Naval Aviation Systems Team provides what it takes to train, fight, and win. Operational readiness also depends on the warfighter. The increased complexity of modern weapons and their support systems demand that our men and women be thoroughly trained. The Naval Aviation Systems Team and its industry partners work day and night to provide warfighters with extensive training system support for aircraft, weapons, and related systems. Our job is to make the warfighter successful by providing fully functioning and adaptable state-of-the-art training systems to the fleet.